So we finally got 3D painting in Procreate 5.2, which came out this week. I tried the beta out and this is now a full release that's available and you can literally take any model that has a set of UV coordinates and you can paint on it right there inside of your iPad. So let's take a look at Procreate 5.2's latest version. Okay, so let's just dive right into Procreate and this particular version that you're seeing now is still the beta. Now, by the time this video comes out, the full version will be available um, and it's probably available now. I just haven't checked. So um, it looks pretty much exactly like any other um, version of Procreate. So you're, when you open it up, you get all of these templates down here at the bottom and you also get some of these um, uh, extra 3D files that, that we're going to have a look at. And then anything that I've brought in over the last couple of days is there at the top so if you just wanted to use procreate as a normal procreate and this is a piece of artwork that comes with it from somebody called nico and um you basically go in and you use your brushes and you just start as as you as you would there's nothing different with the normal 2d process here there are new things um from a 2d point of view but we'll we'll cover those quickly at the end. We just want to have a look at what's in there for us 3D artists. So let's have a look at some of the default ones, first of all. So something really simple. If you hit the ceramic vase, um, that is a 3D model with what's called a, a normal map and a texture map. The texture map is giving you the white colour and the bit of surface, what we call bump there, is coming from a normal map. So it doesn't matter if you don't know what that means. But what it means is this is pre-made and it's got the maps applied to it. What does that mean for you? Well, you can literally just click on it. So tap on it and it goes bright blue or, or flashes blue once. That means that that particular model is active. Now, if you look, there are no other models. So you can only use this one. Um, there could be a lid, for example, in which case you tap the lid and that would go blue and you just paint on the lid. So if you look in the layers now, you can see there you've got a vase and uh, below it, you've got a base layer. So what we're going to do is we won't look at any more of that yet. We'll just literally draw on it. So we'll pick a brush and we'll just have a sketch brush. We won't even need to go into the settings. We'll pick the color black because it's simple and we'll just start drawing. And straight away, you can see you're getting everything that you would get from your 2D brushes, but you're getting it on a 3D object. And with two fingers, you can just zoom in and out. With one finger, you can just roll around and two fingers again, you can pan around. So it's no different than, than Procreate. The only difference is that 3D stroke, if I come up around this corner, is being captured onto that 3D object. So that is what you would see in Adobe Substance Designer, Substance Painter, sorry. Um, it's what you'd see in Mari. It's what you'd see in um, Body Paint with Cinema 4D and even in Blender. So, uh, you know, th 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 this is pretty much um, very, very industry industry standard but it's now on the ipad which makes it amazing now it's not like poly painting in um zbrush which is really just vertex painting which means every point that your model's made up with gets a color aside this is a true texture so how do we know that well for example let's just change it to a bright red and let's just go painting with a flat brush big brush and we'll just do red all across the bottom like this and then we'll change that color to something ridiculous. So let's go to a bright yellow, smaller brush, and just do round like that. Now, what you did notice there as well is the opacity um, can be set lower than 100%. So you can basically just use it to build up layers. So I, I, this is exactly what I would do if I was painting in, in um, just in procreate with nothing but just a flat canvas you're getting exactly the same feeling um you know if, if the opacity is down you'll get less when you when you stroke with your pen like that pick a slightly different yellow carry on round and if i come up here i've gone over that painting that i've done there now what you can do is you can go into here and you can say add a new layer and that gives me another new layer so on that layer i could start painting and let's just do some something silly like red dots like so but if you see here now you can go into here and you can do everything that you would do with that layer the opacity the the overlays the you know you you could do a lighten an overlay a darken a, a multiply 
everything's there for you uh, with that opacity. So you're building the layers on top of the model. So for example, where I've gone over that drawing, I would have done it on another layer and then I wouldn't have lost that drawing. So that's the utter basics of it. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at one more thing and then we'll go back and have a look at some of the other models. So on that base layer, let me turn that layer off and go back to this base layer. On the base layer, there's a bit, little button here. If you click that, it gives you access to color, roughness and metallic. So if I go to roughness now, so I'm now painting how shiny this is and it's either black or white. So we're going to go all the way from all the way black to all the way white. So let's go 100% black. And we'll paint with that and we'll just paint up here and see what happens. So very, very little, a tiny bit of roughness there is coming in. So let's go all the way white and see what happens. Absolutely nothing at all. So no shininess whatsoever. Now, so that's all the way white. And watch this now if I go all the way black and then I rotate it. You can see that that surface now is completely glossy. So if you wanted to do something like plastic or teeth or something that's got that reflectivity, that's the option that you would you would mess with and use. And it's only all the way you know from black to white. So what, what I mean by that is you could come 50% of the way around to the grey and paint that and you're going to get 50% of the, of the strength. And the last one was metallic. And at the moment it's all the way black. So let's just make it white just to show you the extremes again. And if I paint that, what you're going to get is like a definite metallic finish and you can apply them on different layers and you can apply them on on you know in different strengths and different you know different amounts of black to white so a different gradient a different gray scale and that's how you get your different effects for different parts of your body so if you're painting a face you might want to just paint some specular as we used to call it or on, on, on in other programs it's the specular or reflectivity um, in here that's the amount of roughness so you're going to you know increase or decrease the amount of roughness wh wherever you need it um, based on what what you're creating so that gives you an idea on on a very basic model of of what what we are capable of, of getting out of um of, of procreate now so let's open up some of the models that i've been playing with so um this one for example let's just have a look at this this little robot that i did the other night so this one is just a very very straightforward low polygonal model i've just been messing around with all the different you can see his bits where i've overpainted myself on it and um, i did this on the first uh, attempt of getting um uh, procreate beta or the 5.2 beta and it just shows how simple it is to paint on it so i was painting characters on characters i was just testing different colors and definitely if you look in the eye you can see there there's a lot of reflectivity going on um, and it's reflecting the scene which is a really good thing we can talk about right now which is this bit which is up, up here onto actions look at 3d and then edit lighting and environment so if i click on that we get a scene where we can adjust all of the lights and each of these cubes is a light so if i want to get this one for example i can just pick it up and move it around look how it affects uh, the model or the lighting on the model so i can move it all around tick the next one move that all around and you basically build up a nice lighting environment by doing that so you know you do something like a nice light from the top so we have a key light, a fill light, and a rim light, and like two at the front, the key and the fill, and then we have this um, rim light at the back that's a bit more intensity. And what that does is it, it makes the, the the character pop from the side, or you know, it's how a photographer would light a scene or could light a scene. Now you can also change the color of each of the lights, change the amount of saturation in the light, and obviously the intensity. But be careful because obviously you can blow it, you know, completely blow it out like that. So that's quite interesting. Now, one thing that is really cool in that sort of like same area as well, if I click to come back now and go back to 3D, if you see here at the bottom, we've got view in AR. So I can literally just single click like this and what I get is this. So that is me running around the, the my house or running around the studio and just m like adding whatever I've painted from the 3D model and the painting to a, a real world environment. So there's an augmented reality um, uh, 
setting already inside procreate which is amazing so as you're painting now you can literally go and try it in your you know your workspace or you can try it outside or wherever wherever you want and there's no messing around it's not even like having to go out to adobe aero or any of the other you know ar solutions that are out there now it's literally a great way just to see your work so definitely check that out have a look at that um when you get a minute so if i come back out of that in fact, I'll stay in that model, but we'll come back to that same panel. Um, and the other thing I wanted to show you in there is a uh, show 2D texture. So if I hit that, it basically shows you that texture map unwrapped. So you can see here all of the painting. You can see those sketches that I did. You can see the writing that I did, uh, the mouth that I painted on the side. So you could, in fact, you could just start painting directly on here. So if you take your brush again, you can even use color picking, so we'll pick that, and we can start adding it in right here inside the inside the flattened out um, version, which means you can do if you've got specifically you know intricate bits that you want to do, or if there's a very definite um, part of the model you just want to isolate and re you know really concentrate on it. Because don't forget, you could um, use the selection tools. Um, so if we just use freehand we could just select this area and just work on that area. So it works exactly the same as it does in Procreate before it got 3D. So lots to explore there, lot, lot, lots for us to, to, to have a play with in there. So I'll turn 2D texture on and we're back at, as a model. So let's pick another model. Let's pick this one. So this is uh, an imported model now. So this very, very low polygon, you can see it's still quite blocky. But all I did with this was I just made some UVs. Now I did it in ZBrush, but there's lots of um, lots of ways that you can do it on a PC and a Mac. There's not so many on an iPad at the moment. So you would probably be best going over to Forge your app, which does have some UV tools to make your UVs on your models. Um, so if you're a nomad artist, then head over to Forger and get your UVs done there. Um, but you might want to just really spend a bit of time in something like Blender or ZBrush or whatever your preferred desktop solution is and get your UVs or UV coordinates done in there. So um, here's a, a, a great link for someone who's already done it um, even before it was out of beta. Um, Eric 3D has done a really good video on how to uh, push models through Blender and into uh, Procreate. So I'll put the link down in the description, but here's an example of him using that. So he's, he does some amazing video, so it's worth checking him out. Now I'll be doing, um, I'll definitely be doing Nomad to Procreate workflows, which will include Blender um, in the future. So look out for those, because um, most of what this channel has been about for the last year has been how to, to get into digital sculpting with Nomad Sculpt. And obviously this is a great way to now take it to the next stage, which is 3D painting. So look out for that. So if I, I if I go back and have a look at maybe just one more so you can bring anything you want in. So this is a head that I just brought in that I'm starting to work on. So again, you can literally just start um, from nothing and paint it all. And you can drag and drop. You can, you know, if, let me just pick another color. Just pick this yellow and drag and drop and it'll just flood the whole model. So again, very much like we're used to in the old or, or the, the, the Procreate before 3D. And now with the ability to just do that on your 3D models that you bring in. You can use all of the tools other than brushes. So here's the smudge tool in operation. So once you start painting, you can smudge across that across that surface. So it's not just a case of laying down the paint as accurately, accurately as you can. You can use these brushes. And as you start building something up, you'll you'll really feel the power of, 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 of being able to use things like this smudge and blend and blur because um, you'll you'll make your strokes look you know a whole lot better than just you know you know when you first put them on um so another amazing feature is the page assist so you can bring in pdfs and i'll show you exactly what i mean by using this one this is a pdf that i bought from mike corriero who's an amazing uh, concept artist and you can see down at the bottom here we've got all of the pages of the pdf 
So whether this be yours or a, or a PDF that you're working, uh, you're reading or learning from, you can bring them in and you can slide through them like so. Now for me as a teacher, this is perfect um, because I could use this as a way to annotate and could show people the individual bits that I'm working on or the bits that I want to teach about or you know do draw overs and then just move on. And you know, and 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 this here, I mean, it looks like a storyboarder's dream, really. So you've got all of your storyboards made in Procreate, and now you can bring them in, in um, you know, in this sort of format here, where you can scrub through them. Now, if you know animation in Procreate, you can see straight away that these are just layers. So all it's doing is it's bringing that PDF in as individual layers, and then turning on the animation feature. So it's it's almost like it's a script that's running the animation feature down here so you can try that with your own um you know you know if you're especially if you're doing storyboards or, or comic panels this could be a great you know a tool for you to try out so if you add to that things like some new stabilization features for your brushes and also if you've got like this one here if you've got the m1 16 gig ipad you can get much bigger documents so when you go into your creating documents in here your size and resolution um, can go up quite significantly so number of layers goes up with that as well so because apple released the um you know the ability to use more than five gig of ram um, a few weeks ago then it means developers are now taking advantage of that we've got a video on that above if you want to take a look at that and, and see what it means to 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 me for my nomad sculpting um, you just check that out um, from the, the link above so take a look at it and over the next week or two I'll start using um, some of my nomad models I'll take them from nomad and I'll move them into um, painting them in, in in Procreate and we'll hopefully try and show you different ways to get there via programs like ZBrush and Cinema 4D and of course Blender which is the most requested one it's nice to be using other programs on the iPad other than Nomad so you can mix and match and you can pick all of the tools that you want and we'll hopefully show you some more and a wider range of programs over the next few weeks and obviously we're going to go back to VR um, work with things like Shape Labs and also with Gravity Sketch so look out for all those different ways of helping you create in new and innovative ways. If you're liking this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. It does help us along the way. And if you like the video, you might want to consider subscribing and then hitting that notification bell and we'll let you know when we upload new content, which is at the moment every week.